Glory to his name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we bless you. Hallelujah. Good evening, everyone. Good evening to those who have logged in virtually. For we just thank God for allowing us to get through a day that we have never seen before. We just thank God for breathing life into us yet again. And for that, I just say hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we thank you. God, we bless you. Will you bow your heads for a word of prayer? Oh, holy, righteous God, for you are our creator. You are our maker. You are our God. You are our king. And God, we just come before you now telling you thank you. Lord, we thank you for being our blessed Savior. We thank you for being the risen Savior. Hallelujah to your name, oh God. We just glorify you, God. We honor you, God. We honor you. We honor you, oh God. For you are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You are the great I am. You are our peace. You are our joy. You are a forgiving God. And we just say glory to your name, oh God. And Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, I ask that you just touch every person that entered those doors. Every person that logged in, oh God, you know the needs of your people, oh God. Allow them to feel your love, God. Allow them to feel your joy. Allow them to feel your peace right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, we, we just ask that you give us a peace, oh God, which surpasses our understanding. Someone came in, oh God, with a burdened heart, oh God. Someone came with a confused mind, oh God. But your word said, let this mind be in me, which was also in Christ Jesus. God, we just thank you. Someone may come in with uh, ailments in their bodies, oh God, but we know you as Jehovah Rapha, oh God. You are the God who heals. Hallelujah to your name, oh God. And we just thank you for you are omnipresent, oh God. You are everywhere, oh God. And we just thank you. God, we glorify your name. We ask that you just be glorified in everything that's done here today, oh God. That you will just be pleased, oh God. We ask right now, God, as the word go forth, oh God. That you just touch our hearts and touch our minds, oh God. Open up the heart, open up the eyes of our hearts, oh God, so that we can see you, oh God, through everything that's done in here. You just be glorified, you be lifted up, you be exalted. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody tell God hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, tell God hallelujah. Can we worship him in this place? Hallelujah. Come on, somebody open up your mouth in this place. Hallelujah. We serve a mighty God. We serve a holy God. We serve an awesome God. Come on, somebody just lift your hands in this place. Come on, if you know that he's mighty, open up your mouth. Hallelujah. God, we give you glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. We want God to come into this place. Hallelujah. No hindrance, no boundaries. God, move how you want to move. Hallelujah. Come on, begin to open up your mouth. We serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. 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 You're the king. You're the Lord of Lords, hallelujah. And you're worthy to be praised, worthy to be lifted up, worthy to be adored, hallelujah. We give you glory, Jesus. Come on, somebody open up your mouth. We give you glory, Jesus. 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 Come on, somebody open up your mouth. Come on, give God glory. Give God honor. Give God praise. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. Come on, just begin to open up your mouth. Tell God how much you love him. Hallelujah. Tell God how much you adore him. Tell God how much you thank him and how much you honor him for bringing you this far. Hallelujah. He didn't have to do it, but he did it anyway. So we give you glory, Jesus. We give you all the Jesus. We give you what's due to you, adoration. We give it all to you, Jesus. Somebody open up your mouth in this place. If you came in with a heart of thanksgiving, with a heart of gratefulness, just begin to open up your mouth. We give you glory. 
we serve a mighty God. We serve a holy God. We serve an awesome God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're worthy, Jesus. Yes, Lord. We serve a mighty God. We serve a holy God. We serve an awesome God. My Savior, my Savior, help me say we serve a mighty God. We serve a holy God. We serve an awesome God. My Savior, my Savior, we serve a mighty God. Yes, you are. We serve a holy God. We serve an awesome God. My Savior, my Savior, you are the great I am. Yes, Lord, you are. And you are. Come on, just say it. We serve a mighty God. Say we serve a holy God. We serve a holy God. Ain't nobody know that it's our We serve an awesome God. Say my Savior. You are. Say you are. You are my Ain't nobody know that he's holy. holy. And anybody know that he's awesome. Yes, Lord.
Will somebody lift your hands in this place if you know that he's mighty? So I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. No matter what I see or how I feel. Yes, Lord. As long as I'm breathing. Oh, yes, I'm breathing. I'll bless the Lord as long as I'm breathing. Oh, yes, I'm breathing. I'll bless the Lord. Can we say it one more time? I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my No matter what I see or how I feel, as long as I'm breathing, oh yes, I'm breathing, I'll bless the Lord. As long as I'm breathing, oh yes, I'm breathing, I'll bless the Lord. Now somebody give them praise. Come on, anybody bless in the name of Jesus. Right now, I dare you to just lift up your hands and open up your mouth and bless the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody open up your mouth and bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be lifted up and worthy to be adored. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, if you do me a favor all over the building, will you give God your best praise? Hallelujah. I know it's Bible study. Amen. Even in virtual world, will you just give God your, your best praise? Hallelujah. Because God has been, because God has been, yes, he's been good to us. God has been good to us. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Even when it's raining, God is good. Even when sometimes we don't know what the weatherman is going to do. God is still, still good. The fact that he woke you up this morning ought to tell you that. Hallelujah, that God is good. And it's not just good, but he's real good. Not just real good, but he's oh, 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 so good. God, we thank you for being so good to us. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and hallelujah. Well, if you pray with me on tonight, amen, we're going to jump into God's word and see what he would say, amen, to um, keep us moving forward. We thank God for the prayer ministry, amen. We thank God for the song ministry, amen. And then we thank God for all of you, amen, for coming out to hear what thus says the Lord on tonight, amen. Father God, we bless you. Father God, we thank you because you are our God. And God, we love you so much. And we love you because you first loved us. And God, tonight we just come out to give you praise. We give your name glory. We give your name honor. And we tell you how much we do appreciate all the mighty blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Thank you for keeping us healthy. Thank you for keeping us safe. Thank you for keeping us in our right mind. So God, we do bless you. But now even on tonight, God, we say take us down into your word. Give us perfect recall of your scriptures. Help us to impart that which you would say to your people on tonight. So God, we bless your name. It is in your son Jesus' name we do pray. And the people of God said, amen, amen, amen. Go ahead and take your seats on tonight, amen, because as I talk, I'm going to go through quite a few scriptures on tonight and um, do some teaching, amen, on tonight. And hopefully you will get an opportunity to really uh, bask in what God is saying and what God is doing because we know God in so many different ways. And tonight I want to make sure you know that Whatever God has promised you, you can count on it. Amen. Whatever, whatever God has told you, you can take that check to the bank. I, I just want you to know because sometimes in life, amen, we get to points where we just don't know if God's going to do what he said because he didn't do it when we thought he would do it. But I just come to confirm that if God said it, you can count on it. I just come to confirm that, that if God said he's going to do it, he's going he's gonna to do it. Glory to God. Anybody still know him to be a waymaker? Where he's made, where he's made, where he's made a way, Amen. 
Hallelujah. Anybody still know him to be a healer? Glory to God. Anybody still know him to just be everything that you need and some? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody know him to be a healer in the house? Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. I just want to remind us on tonight, amen, as I um, begin to talk, is God has been real good to us. Even in the worst of situations, God is still good. Even when things don't look like they're good, God is still good. And the reason I understand that is because I've been through some things. But not only that, I understand his perfect word. Because his word says, watch this, all things woo, work together for good. You thought good things work together for good. But, but this word say all things work together for good. So even when it don't look good, it don't feel good, just know that God is still working it for good. Okay, I know you went through that and you didn't like it, but guess what? It turned out all right. I know you had to deal with this and you didn't like it, but guess what? It turned out all right. It still worked for your good even though you did not see the good in it. But when you add it all up and the sum total is, it's been good. I love the songwriter when he said, my good days outweigh. Hello, somebody. That, that's, what, that's why I want to tell you that because sometimes when you're dealing with your bad days, you forget about your good days. But when you add it all up, my good days, they outweigh my bad days. Therefore, I I won't complain. Pastor, why are you going there? Because on tonight, on tonight, I really want you to be able to see that God is a promise keeper. Um, I'll open up with the scripture in 2 Corinthians 1.20. You can just jot these scriptures down and um, read them at your leisure or use them for some good talking points when you get with your friend to, man, make him seem like you know something. Amen. In 2 Corinthians 1.20, it says this. For all the promises of God in him are yea. Can I drop the mic right there? And in him, amen. Unto the glory of God by us. All the promises of God are yea and amen. When God is promising, all you got to do is say, yes, sir. I receive it. I know it's going to happen. Yea and amen. Guess what amen means? It done. It is so. So no matter what he said, he has the ability to do what he said. So all you have to do is continue to walk. Well, pastor, why are you walking so um, sternly when the ground is falling apart? Because God said, I'm going to make it. Pastor, why are you looking like you're smiling when you're dealing with all of this chaos? Because God said, I'm going to make it. And if God said it, I just believe it. Glory to God. It's settled. It's a done deal. Hallelujah. And some folk don't, be, don't believe what God say, but you can just take it straight on to the bank, deposit that check, because it's good. Glory to God. Um, if you were in Bible study a couple months back, I was teaching on a series about the names of God. And in this series about the names of God, we called him one name that was kind of important that dealt with covenant, and that was Jehovah or Yahweh. That's his covenant name. That's his name that puts us in agreement with God. Amen. So Jehovah being his covenant name, watch this, Jehovah mean I promise you. When we call him Jehovah Nisi, watch this, watch this. Somebody tell me what Nisi means. Amen. If you know Nisi means banner and he is Jehovah, watch this, that means I will promise you to fight for you. Somebody, somebody, somebody missed that. If you know what shalom means, peace. Jehovah tied to shalom means I promise I will keep you in peace because I am Jehovah, my promise, shalom, your peace. Can I go a little further? We talked about another name that was called Jehovah Jireh. Everybody know that because he's my provider. He's not just your provider, but guess what? His promise to you is that I will provide. So even if you don't know Jehovah Jireh, you can look at it this way. He promises you 
that he'll take care of you. Because he is Jehovah Jireh. I don't quite understand all the names of God, but I know he's a promise. And I know he'll keep his promise, so I know he will provide for me. Okay, okay. Jehovah Shammah. A lot, a lot of folks say, ooh, pastor, where did you get that from? Because we're in a season where everybody's leaving everybody. We're in a season where sometimes you're stuck all by yourself. But when he called, when we call him Jehovah Shammah, that means I'll be there. When everybody else leave you, I'm going to stay right there with you. When everybody else turn their back on you, I'm going to still be there with you. When everybody else step out, I'm going to step in. Because I am Jehovah Shammah. I promise never to leave you, nor to forsake. I'm, tr I'm trying to help us tonight because we see God in all kinds of ways. But as I explained tonight, he is a promise keeper. And these are the promises that he's made to us. And if we know him to be a promise keeper, all you got to do is depend on his promises. Glory to God. Let me, let me go a little farther. Watch this. Watch this. God is the only one who can make and keep his promises. Okay. I know you got some friends that you trust in. I know you got some family members that you depend on. But God is the only one who can make and keep. His promises. Okay, pastor, why do you say that? Watch this, watch this. Because man sometimes don't have control of the situations and circumstances, his intentions was good. When he promised you, he had intended to keep his promise. But because he cannot control all of the circumstances of life, sometimes he can't keep what he said. That's man. But if God tell you, this is what I'm going to do, not only does he make a promise, but he guarantees he will keep his promise. Well, Pastor, how do you know that? Because he's all-knowing. He is omniscient. He knows what's going to happen before it happens. I can see to the corner. He sees around the corner. I can see to the hill. He sees over the hill. He already knows what's going to happen, so he knows how to keep what he said. Okay, well, let me go a little farther. He is omnipotent, meaning he is all-powerful. So even when things seem like they're going to change because he has power, so, y'all going to make me scream. Because he has power, he can change it right. He can change it around. When it seems to be going wrong because he is all powerful, he can switch it the way, the way he wanted it to be so that the end result will still be you win. Ah, somebody missed that. The pastor, I be dealing with situations, I be dealing with circumstances, and it just seemed like it ain't working for me. Because he is omnipotent, has all power, watch this, he can override your circumstances. He can override the difficulty that you're dealing with. Well, pastor, how do you know this? Because I'm a Bible reader. If I just back up and go back to Moses, he told Moses, take my children out of the children of Israel to get them out of Egypt. Watch this. Why he's getting, he promised them why he's getting them out of Egypt. All of a sudden, here comes a roadblock. The roadblock was the Red Sea. You think the roadblock was a red was a stopping point for God? No, because he had promised Moses the Red Sea stood there, and guess what God did? God moved it. <laughs> because it was going to be a roadblock, it was going to stop God. Promise, God stepped in and moved the Red Sea so that Moses could get across. Okay, let me go just a little farther then because after that happened and Moses went on and then Joshua was supposed to lead the children of Israel into the promised land. Well, how do you know he's a promise keeper? Because he promised him I would get you there. But in the midst of him getting them there, guess what happened? They dealt with Jericho. And Jericho had walls. The walls were going to block them. But God stepped right in and God moved it. And so to keep his promises from failing, God will step in and override. Override your situations so that his promises will be fulfilled. Okay, well... Uh, what if I just don't use Joshua or don't use Moses' testimony? I believe I can look out here in Pleasant Hill or out there in social social world, social media, and somebody can testify that when God promised me something, something came up and God still moved it. <laughs> I believe I can find one or two folk that can testify that there were some walls in my life and just like Jericho, God stepped in and he knocked them walls down so I could get to my promise. Okay, okay. 
Y'all, 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 y'all gonna get me a, a little more excited than I wanna be on tonight. I just want, I, I just wanna talk to you because, because the hard part is he made a promise, and when he made a promise, it was his intention to keep his promise. And because he's all knowing, and because he's all powerful, he's gonna keep what he said. Woo! Okay, okay. Let me let me go just a little farther because some I, I, I feel somebody didn't grab that yet. And I don't want to stay there, but just give me one more minute because God promised you something when you were six years old. And he kept that promise. Well, Pastor, how do you know? Because now you're 36. And out of all the things that happened to you between 36 and 36, okay, okay, let me, let me just skip that because I might shout on my own right there. I mean, because God made me some promises and I didn't think I was going to ever reap the benefits of it. But now that I am on the other side, I said, God, you are a promise keeper. You are. A, uh, okay, okay. Y'all, y'all, will y'all calm down? God, you are a promise keeper. Let me, let me say this because y'all, y'all going to make this a long night. I just wanted to just give you a couple nuggets. Um, when we look at promises, there are two types of promises um, as the Bible relates to. One is an unconditional type and one is a conditional type. Um, the conditional type of promise is one that comes with conditions. The unconditional type is one that's without conditions. If there is an unconditional promise, that means God will do it in spite of. God will do it in spite of what's going on. You know why? Because it don't depend on you. It has nothing to do with you. God's just going to do it. He made a promise to you, and guess what? No matter what you do, no matter what the situations are, God's going to do it. That's an unconditional promise. It's just like unconditional love. You ain't even got to love me for me to love you. Because it's unconditional. You ain't got to give me nothing in return. You don't have to reciprocate because my love for you is unconditional. I'm going to love you anyhow. you just so nasty. you just so mean. But it doesn't affect my love for you because it's unconditional. So when God promises you something, even though you didn't walk the way he told you to walk, even though you didn't do what he told you to do, even though you didn't move when he told you to move, he's going to still do it because it's unconditional. That's an unconditional promise. It comes without conditions. Okay, let me go a little farther. There are conditional promises. That means you got to do something for God to do something. Um, The Bible relates to those when he says, if then promises. If the media minister would go ahead and pop up um, 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. Watch this. This is an if then promise. Hallelujah. Watch what the Bible says. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then... See, you want God to do something, but this is a conditional promise. If you do your part, then I'll do my part. A lot of times we think God's not moving, but God said, I'm waiting on you to do yours. A lot of times we think God's not answering our promises, but God said, won't you do your part, and I guarantee you, I'll do my part. But we want God, we want God to just automatically do it unconditionally, but God said, no, this is a conditional promise. I want to do it for you. I'm ready to do it for you, but if you do yours... Then I'll do mine. Oh, God, won't you heal the sin? We got COVID going on. God, won't you do? No, 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 no. There are some things you got to do before I do this. He said, I will heal the land. I will forgive their sin. And you tell me, come on, God. We wait. God said, no, no, no. The A part of it is, if you do this, then I'll do this. That's a conditional promise. Amen. Let's move forward. I, Pastor, why are you sharing this with us? Because God is trying to help us to move and help us to do stuff. And we are mad with God because God's not moving. And God is mad with you because you're not moving. It's just like forgiveness or unforgiveness. Well, Pastor, they say something to me. Well, won't you forgive them? Huh? I'm waiting on them. If you will go ahead and forgive them and go ahead and ask them for forgiveness and go ahead and say, I'm sorry, we can resolve that. But you waiting on them, they waiting on you. And both of y'all just waiting in hell. I mean in trouble. <laughs> Woo. Amen. Uh, for unforgiveness will get you to hell. So I don't, that's why that popped on out. Maybe I was supposed to say that. Uh, the point I want to make is tonight, and watch this, watch this. God is watching you. Because he gave you his promise or he gave you his word and he's watching you to make sure his word is accomplished. 
okay, let me see. Let me give you another scripture then because you didn't get it. G Jeremiah 1, 11 and 12. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And he said, I see a rod of an almond tree. The word of the Lord came. God spoke his word. Then watch what he did. Then said the Lord unto me, thou hast well seen, for I will hasten to perform my word. If you look at that in another verse, hasten means I will watch my word until it's complete. Okay, let me, let, me, let me give you a little demonstration. God spoke it. Not only did he speak it, he says, I'm going to watch it till it come to pass. God told you what he wanted you to do. And he stepped back and watched. Not you, not you, but he watched his word. And as his word was being performed, as he got to a roadblock, guess what? He stepped back in, fixed it, stepped back out, and watched it something. Don't y'all make me shout tonight. Somebody missed that. Somebody missed that. When I was sharing with you what God told you at six years old, he said, this is who you're going to be and this is what's going to happen. This is my promise to you. But at 12, you was in a car wreck. Watch this. It was supposed to kill you. But God stepped in because he had made a promise to you. And so you couldn't die in the car wreck because... Because God stepped in to override what the devil thought he had. And then once you was well from the car wreck, he stepped back out. But he didn't just stay there. Watch this. He continued to watch his word. And when you were 16 and had an abortion or had a miscarriage, he stepped back in. Because that was supposed to kill you. That was supposed to take you out. But because God loves you, he stepped back in to fix your situation. And he didn't just stay there. Once it was rectified and you was healthy again, he stepped back out. And continue to watch his word. He wasn't watching you. He was watching the word. He gave you a word at six and now you're 36. And God said, now it's going to happen. I've been watching you for 30 years. And now I'm going to perform what I told you when you were six. I'm just, <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying you got to be careful because we don't see what God is doing. And God said, I'm doing it. And even, what the song say, even when I ain't doing nothing, I'm doing something. He said, man, God ain't moving. God ain't doing nothing. That is not true. When God is resting, God is working. The Bible said he neither sleeps nor slumbers. So when you don't think he moving, he moving. When you don't think he doing something, he doing something. Okay. Pastor, will you calm down? No, because I want you to know that he is a promise keeper. From 6 to 60. All 66 books. Amen. Able to keep him from Genesis all the way to Revelation. That's why they call him Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. The first and the last. He is able to keep that which he promised you. Okay. Pastor, will you calm down? I don't know because I'm why y'all got me excited tonight? Woo! I'm, I just want you to believe and trust that it will happen for you. Well, pastor, he's doing it for them and he's doing it for No, 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 no. There you go again. There you go again. You think it too hard. Trusting in you. Um, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Most people have it as their own. This is my scripture. This is my favorite verse. Most folks, I mean, they quote it verbatim. It says, trust in the Lord with all. Can I, can I stop right there? Do y'all know what all mean? It's not part of your heart. Not, not, not whenever you feel like trust. Trust it with all your heart. That's why relationships so messed up because we give people part. You get a part, you get a part, you get a part, everybody get a part. But God said, that's, I don't want a part, I want all. I want, I want all. And when me and you are in a relationship and you're giving me your all, guess what happens? I give you my all. Amen? So God says, watch this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own. Y'all better hold my feet. Lean not to your own understanding. That's where I was going. Everybody think they so smart. We got, ooh, pastor, I know, ooh, pastor, I know. Don't pop your fingers at me. No, sit down and shut up and listen to somebody and get something. Don't be doing your neck and twisting your head. You ain't learning nothing. You're 40 years old and still. 
All I'm, all I'm saying is, watch this, watch this. You would be better if you stopped leaning. You would be better if you stopped thinking you know it all. You would be better if you sit down and take some stuff in. That's why you got, whoo, two ears, somebody said, two eyes. And most of y'all think you got two mouths. But you only got one. And so that means you ought to hear as, twice as much as you talk. So if you just would, I hate to tell folks to shut up, but if you would just be quiet, sometimes if you just shut that thing up, every now and then you can learn something, but you over talking to everybody. Sit back and learn something. Glory to God. Watch this, watch this. Lean not to your own understanding. Well, Pastor, I know it. No, you don't. You knew it, you would be standing up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, in all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Did y'all see the promise in that? If you trust him, and lean not to you, but lean to him. Then he says, watch this. Just acknowledge me and I will direct your path. That's my promise to you. But since you're so smart and since you're Googling everything. He says, stop leaning on Google and lean on God. Oh, All I'm saying is, watch this, your understanding is flawed, your understanding is um, inferior, um, I'm trying to think, of, your understanding is lacking when it comes to God. I know you got all the initials behind your name, but you still are not that smart. I I'm just saying, I, I, I know you still, te you teach in kindergarten, but you're not that smart. I'm just, I'm just saying. The hard part is, watch this, watch this, um, Isaiah 58 and 8. You got that one, baby? Hallelujah. Isaiah 58 and 8. Isaiah 58 and 8. <laughs> you better come on. Woo! Isaiah 58 and 8. Hallelujah. Say, for my thoughts. Hello, smart people. Are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. Let me go a little farther. And my thoughts than your thoughts. You just thought you were smart. You're so smart. But God's ways are higher than our ways. God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Well, Pastor, why are you going there? Because you're leaning on you and you ought to be leaning on God. Because you're thinking you know it all when God said, you know, I give you knowledge. This is, this is a wisdom book. And if you want wisdom, get it. If you want knowledge, the Bible says get it. Don't just think you got it. Okay, okay. Uh, Pastor, I share this with you because the hard part is we don't see things the same way. We don't think the same way because his thoughts are much higher than ours. His ways are much higher than ours. We just think we know, but God knows. We just think we think. But you can't think like he think. Um, and then when he does things, you say, well, why is he doing it that way? He knows the way that you take. And he knows what's best for you. The hard part is we just think we know and we don't. But Pastor, why you keep saying we don't? Because knowledge comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You thought that was just faith. Amen. And let me, let me go just a little bit farther, then I'm, I'm going to be prepared to close. When I'm saying God does things differently, when he don't see the same thing that you see or do it the same way that you do it, Paul says, Paul says, there was a thorn in my flesh. You remember I told you that? And Paul had a major issue with that thorn because he said three times I prayed that God would remove it and God did not remove it. God said back unto Paul, my grace is sufficient. And so even though I won't remove it, I'll give you enough grace to endure it. Okay, okay. Well, Pastor, why are you sharing that with us? Because you want God to do what you want to do, but God knows what's best for you. Even with Paul, Paul is complaining about his throne, talking about, ooh, this thing is so painful, but watch what, watch what God say. But it's causing you to be so prayerful. 
You want me to get rid of it, and I'm saying it's better for you to keep it. You're saying this thing is hurting you, but when I see the benefits coming out of it, I say it's better for you to keep it. And so sometimes we think, well, God, why are you doing, put this on me, and why are you put this on me? Because God knows the results of what it's going to bring. He, Paul had that thing put on him because it was to buffet him, to keep him humble. Because in that day, Paul was like a god. Paul had power. Paul didn't just walk around talking. Paul was demonstrating the work that he was talking about. See, some of us, we just a lot of lip service. And so nobody don't pay us no attention. But I guarantee you, if you start raising the dead, if you start causing miracles to happen, if you had signs and wonders following you, people would think a whole lot different. But since you just got lip, they just look. But I guarantee you, if that lip service turned into real work for God, woo! Paul did. Y'all stop screaming. The devil says, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. <laughs> what? Don't you? What? I, I, he was laughing like, I'm going to punk you. I'm going to jump you. What? That's how the devil was looking because you thought you were going to do some work. And he said, oh, I've experienced the work of Paul. I know what Paul can do. I've experienced the work of Jesus. I know what Jesus can do. And now you're trying to ride on their coattail. <laughs> Baby, you better back up. <laughs> you, better, you, better, you better back up. It's going down. point I'm trying to make us tonight is God is a promise keeper. And every single promise that he's made to you, he is able to keep that which he has made to you. Um, there's one more scripture, baby, that I gave you. Pop that up for me real quick. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. That's all I got to say. God is faithful. He is a promise keeper. And if he's made you any promises, even if it was 20 years ago, 30 years ago, or 50 years ago, God is able to keep that which he promised you. Don't you lose heart. Because it ain't happened yet. Just keep on living. Keep on believing. Keep on trusting. Keep on trusting. Well, Pastor, I thought by now, that ain't trust, that's doubt. That ain't trust, that's doubt. I thought, I thought by now, this would have happened. I thought by now I would be there. But no, watch the promises of God. The Bible says they are yay and amen. And when I can say yay and amen, that means I'm going to get it. I may not get it today, but it's coming. I may not get it tomorrow, but it's coming. I'm just waiting on the check because it's a good check. You can cash this. It ain't going to bounce. It ain't going to come back insufficient fun. You can, woo. Glory to God. And it comes with interest already compounded. God is a good God. And he keep every promise. That's why we call him a promise keeper. Thank you, God, for being a promise keeper. Thank you, God, for being all that we could ever ask you to be. Have God ever made anybody a promise? Can anybody testify that he kept that promise that he made you? Can, can anybody testify that there are some promises that are yet to be fulfilled and, and I'm just holding on, I'm just trusting in him, I'm just believing in him, I'm not going to doubt, I'm going to wait, I'm going to walk it on out because I know God, watch this, I know God is watching. God Almighty, he didn't just speak it, he watching it. Because the Bible said he going to watch it so he can perform it. So when hell, when trouble rises, woo, when trouble rises, he's ready to step in because he can override trouble. And then he's going to step out and watch it again. And five years from now, because it hasn't happened yet, and something else show up, he's going to step in. And he's going to work it out. And then he's going to step back out because he's going to watch his word until his word is performed because the Bible said, my word shall not return. Y'all give God some praise. Y'all, y'all, y'all give God some praise. I'm out. I'm out. I'm. Y'all, this this was too good for me. Y'all had y'all got me too excited tonight. 
I, I, I feel like Sunday morning service. Woo! Y'all, y'all, y'all got me too hot. I'm, I'm, I'm sweating. Feel like shouting. Because he's a good God. Because he's a mighty God. Because he's a promise keeping God. Woo! Give God some praise all over the building on the night. Just give God some praise. Even in virtual world, if you know God will keep his promises, will you just bless him for a minute? Will you just bless him for a minute? God, we thank you. God, we bless you. God, we love on you because you are a promise keeper. You are a promise keeper. You are a promise keeper. Woo! Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Ah. Trust him. Believe in him. Don't let social media in. All of those voices and distractions cause you not to believe or believe what he said. Can I say believe on him? Can I say believe on him? Because I believe every word he said. 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 Glory to God. Every promise that he has made, he has kept. And the ones that I have not seen, I know he shall fulfill. Because he's watching them so that he can perform them. Hallelujah. Our first lady is coming, amen, with our invitation to discipleship and with our announcements on tonight, amen. So I can put my head back, amen, and just rest because y'all have made me shout tonight. And I, was, and I was just trying to talk to you, just trying to get you to see some scriptures in a different way. To remind you when you're in a tough situation what God has promised you. To remind you when you're going through something to remember his promises. Hallelujah. Come on, First Lady. Glory to God. Give First Lady some praise, amen, as she comes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless you. Hallelujah. God is a promise keeper. God is full of saved people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Our announcements are as follows. We have a PHMBC app, and you are welcome to download it from your Apple App Store or your Google Play Store. And on that app, you can find out all sorts of information about what's going on here at the Hill, but also there's a Give button, and we ask that you would consider giving unto this ministry. The Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. So we ask that you would uh, search your hearts and do your part. And if you're in the sanctuary and you, and you would like to just drop your offering off as you leave, we will have buckets at the door near the exit. Our announcements, always reminding you that the outreach is open Mondays from 10 to 1 receiving donations, so please support that. Also, on September the 17th, WOW, Women of the Word, our women's ministry here, will have an event called Something Has to Break. And it is a forum where we're going to be dealing with hurt, pain, disappointment, and all of those negative things that the enemy tried to put on us, and it will be a time of breakthrough. Um, it will be September the 17th at 11.30 a.m. And we ask that if you intend, plan to come and would like lunch to please register. You may register from our website. Go to the events page and register so we can count you in the lunch. I only mentioned Jason Nelson and John P. Key, but there will be other, other celebrity musical gospel worshiping praisers in the house as well. So we ask that you come and you support that. And then family, I just want to remind you to please keep 
the family of Deborah Johnson in prayer. The Lord called her home earlier during this week. And also her funeral or her homegoing celebration will be this Saturday at 3.30 p.m. right here. Saturday, 3.30 p.m. right here. She was fairly a new member, but let's support her family and show them how much we appreciate the time that she did share with us. Amen. Let me just reiterate real quickly. Um, Deborah Jackson was a faithful member. She showed up at everything. Whether it was Bible study, whether it was early morning prayer, intercessory prayer, whether it was empowerment class. When the doors opened, she, sh she showed up. And even though she was a fairly new member, she was already on different committees. Working with the new members committee, working with WOW, working with outreach. So, so we have to show up and support those who supported us. So we don't ever want to look back and say, Ooh, well, who was, well, you weren't there, but she was. And so we want to encourage the entire family, amen, to come out and support the home going of Sister Deborah Jackson, amen. We want to make sure, amen, that we have ushers, that we have our music ministry, that we have um, our ministers, and you who love her, and those who just decided, amen, I don't even know her, but you are part of this family. She's a family member, amen. So I want to encourage you, amen, I want to encourage you, mark your calendars this Saturday, this Saturday at 3.30 sharp, amen. We'll be here, amen, having our funeral services, and then they're going to have the um, interment at Sylvester in um, Shepherd's Memorial Gardens up in Sylvester, Georgia. So we just want to encourage you, if you need any additional information, please call the Office of Administration and we'll be certainly to um, share that information with you. God bless you. God keep you is my prayer. Let us stand to our feet to be dismissed on tonight. Amen. Well, if all of our hearts are full of joy, love, peace, thanksgiving, long-suffering, all of the fruit that the Bible says we should be exhibit, let us stand and be dismissed. Father God, we thank you for this time that we've had together. We pray, God, that your word will uh, grow within us, stay within us, God, and that we will be able to produce a hundredfold. We thank you for the pastor. We thank you for every member and everyone who has tuned in. And we pray, Lord, that you will give us safe travels to our safe places. Until we meet again, in Jesus' name, amen.